Maritime Made on Eastlink is presented by Nova Scotia Business Inc. Working with companies across Nova Scotia to be more successful exporters every step of the way. The Lunenburg Bag Company creates unique bags from reclaimed materials. Much like Lunenburg itself, the business is known for its relationship to sailing. Most of the fabric used in these bags is actually old sails that have been donated. Today, the bag that started it all is being made, a small bucket bag. So I got my first sewing machine at 17 and um, new machine and I started uh, right away. I started sewing products, hats, bags, and I've morphed from that as a teenager into the Lunenburg Bag Company today. I consider the company to be as unique as the town of Lunenburg and the products I make I hope are as unique as, as the town they are made in. I try to make a unique, beautiful, functional, purposeful bag is what my aim is with the company, is to, uh, to make a product that somebody wants to carry and, um, and I'm proud to make that product for them. A sail is rolled out. It's pulled from one end of the room to the other and examined as each sail is different. This is a small 10 by 20 foot sail. 14 inches is measured all the way around from the exterior edge. The finished edge will become the top of this bag. Once finished, the top of the sail's exterior edge is cut through with a knife and the measurements are cut using sharp scissors. A rope inside this edge is removed. The remaining smaller sized sail is cut halfway through on the flake. The flake is where a sail is folded. One section is taken to the work table and unrolled. 38 inches of the most interesting area is measured and the body of the bag is cut out. Next, a roll of royal blue cordura material is unrolled. It's used to make the bag's overlay, which will go around its exterior. Next, a 14-inch diameter circle is traced. Both the overlay and then the circle bottom are cut out. The bottom of the bag is made up of a layer of conveyor belt fabric called Wevex, the Cordura, and another layer of sail material. Next, a roll of gray vinyl is unrolled. The iconic anchor pattern is traced and cut out. A rope is selected and tied around the anchor in a bowline knot. Double-sided tape is used on the back of the anchor to hold it in place on the middle of the bag until sewing. Started out with um, my first set of sails and then I brought it. I was um, working on a schooner at the time, um, doing some varnish work and some seamstress work on the side and I asked the owner of that schooner if he'd be interested in giving me a sail, which he did. And, um, and it just morphed into all the schooners wanted to donate sails and have bags made. So I've been uh, making bags for some pretty famous sails along the way. And it's evolved into other materials. Um, I'm using conveyor belt from the pulp and paper industry. I'm using vinyls from uh, upholstery shops. I've got uh, leather from uh, some different businesses in Halifax. They're scraps and uh, just turning them into fun bags. The next steps happen in the sewing room. The machine's thread is changed to white. The three bottom pieces are sewn together with the Cordura on the bottom, Wevex in the middle, and sail on top. A bit of excess sail is trimmed. The overlay is placed on the bottom edge of the body and is sewn in. A large ruler is used to measure 11.5 inches down from the top. The fabric is flipped around and the top of the overlay is folded to this guideline as it's sewn on to keep the fabric straight. Now the signature anchor is sewn on. At this stage, all the outer edges are sewn. All threads are pulled through to the inside of the bag and securely tied together. The rope is sewn next. 
it swirled around and looped to finish trailing near the top edge of the bag. The circle is attached to the bottom, sewing the open sides of the body together until they meet. The overlay is lined up and clamped in position while the sides are sewn together from bottom to top. The stitches are checked and excess thread is cut off. A binding tool is attached to the sewing machine with duct tape and a special binding is added along the edges of the bag. Now a label is added to the inside of the bag and is top stitched. The gap where the circle is attached to the body is sewn. Then binding is added to the bottom. Once finished, any excess binding is trimmed and the edges are burnt. Now the bag is flipped right side out and it's time to add the handles. After measuring for just the right spots, four holes are punched in with a dead blow hammer and hole punch. Nickel grommets are attached with a grommet setter. 32 inches of rope is measured out twice and burnt off in the rope burner. Burning will keep the ends of the rope from fraying. The ends of the ropes are given square knots on the inside of the grommets. The handles are tested and the bag is finished. You can find the Lunenburg Bag Company and these long-lasting, sustainable bags at the Lunenburg Farmer's Market or through Facebook. My products are sold in Lunenburg. I'm in a store called Down Home Living. They were the first store to pick up my sale bags. And I'm in the Blue Nose Company store. And as well, I do the Lunenburg Farmer's Market every Thursday. And business is booming and, and uh, you know, I'm trying to get um, all these different bags made. Generally, the way that they've been contacting me from Europe is through my Lunenburg Bag Company Facebook page. They will contact, message me on Facebook page. And what I do is I say, just give me a color, um, things that you like, um, that interest you, and then I design their bag based on their preferences online and they trust me to design their bag, so I'm honored. And um, yeah, so I'll come up with a unique bag for that person and then ship it to Europe.